This is a very nice case that was kindly shared with me by Dr. Antonina Kalmakova of CSD Healthcare in Kiev. Uh, I don't have clinical history other than to say this was a solitary lesion and uh, developed in an adult. Uh, and that helps us a lot when we think about the differential diagnosis of such a lesion. Now this field shows a very nice lichenoid tissue reaction. We can see that there's hyperkeratosis, we can see acanthosis, and we can see a band-like infiltrate in the superficial dermis. So if we look at this lesion and think about the differential diagnosis just on this low power examination, well, obviously, lichen planus comes into the differential, but lichen planus presents with multiple polygonal flat top papules rather than a solitary lesion, so I think we can forget about lichen planus. Lichen striatus could show similar morphology, although generally one expects to see spongiotic change as well, and in, in any event, lichen striatus presents with multiple lesions in a linear distribution following uh, a dermatome. So lichen striatus can be excluded. Um, Nikam's disease uh, is, is another possibility, but then in Nikam's disease one tends to see multiple lesions in uh, often in reticulate or plaque form. So I think that can be excluded. Similarly, uh, a lichenoid drug reaction doesn't usually present as a single lesion. I think we could consider a fixed drug reaction because that can present with one, one lesion, a, a recurrent lesion. Uh, but I think the clinical history would probably give us some clue as to that. So then the other differentials we might think about uh, include uh, a lichenoid keratosis or uh, a lichenoid actinic keratosis. Now, we don't see any sun damage in the adjacent superficial dermis, so I think we can forget about that. So, at this low power magnification, my first bet is going to be that this is almost certainly going to be a lichenoid keratosis or lichen planus like keratosis. Let's look at it at a bit higher magnification. And here we can see some interesting features. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any parakeratosis, which is a bit unusual in a lichenoid keratosis, but I don't suppose that's an absolute obligatory finding. It's just what you expect to see most often. The epidermis is, uh, is certainly acanthotic, although interestingly, if we look at it slightly higher magnification, uh, in lichen planus, you tend to see uh, an acanthosis with a very irregular and jagged lower border, often described as sawtooth acanthosis. And here we see, at least in part, the epidermal acanthosis has got an almost seraciform appearance. And some people believe that um, lichenoid keratosis represents a sort of regression in a lentigo. And I suppose this lentiginous hyperplasia might go along with that diagnosis in, in this particular case. And uh, if we look Further, the other thing that we can see is this very marked interface change going, affecting nearly all of the lesion. And even at this magnification, we can see a cytoid body. So let's go to the full magnification that we can use. And uh, we'll come across, and there's our cytoid body there. And that's probably a rather defunct one there. And then if we look at the dermis, we can see that it's a lymphohistiocytic infiltrate. Now, in, in lichenoid keratosis, one often sees um, in 
something is ah yeah sorry one one can often see uh, scattered plasma cells and even an occasional eosinophil now i looked at this earlier and i found a couple of eosinophils but i suppose i won't find them now one never does second time round anyway that having said that i couldn't find any plasma cells and um we're not picking up the eosinophils very easily the other thing you might notice is there's quite a bit of pigment in 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 incontinence in the superficial dermis so um i think i think it's reasonable to interpret this histology uh, particularly with the clinical history of um, a solitary lesion, I think we can interpret this as a lichenoid keratosis. There is a single remnant nucleus there, so I suppose if one really wants to push it, one can say this does show there's another one there. One can, one can say that this shows just a hint of parakeratosis but I I think I'm stretching things a bit myself so in summary uh, I think this is a, a lichenoid keratosis now this is not a rare lesion it it, uh, it presents most often in adults and uh, it's generally something we see in in, in, in light skin patients and it presents as a small usually pigmented and sometimes very heavily pigmented lesion and this is because of the pigment incontinence and the problem is that clinically the pigmentation often suggests um, a melanocytic lesion and when it's very heavily pigmented folk might worry about a melanoma the other clinical differential diagnosis for solitary lichen penis like keratosis is a superficial basal cell carcinoma and in situ squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, and so these, these lesions tend to get biopsied really to exclude something more sinister. And I think that's all I have to say about this entity. So I hope that's been of some interest and some use to you. And thank you very much for listening to it.